Welcome everyone to the Cardano Effect Podcast, episode 17. The purpose of this podcast is to take high-level developer information and projects that are occurring within the Cardano space and break them down into bite-sized, consumable pieces of information for everyday use. I'm your host, Philippe, and let's get this podcast started. I wanted to thank everyone for the engagement for episode 16. We did a Q&A, and we've, we got beautiful comments. People were saying things like they want these Q&A sessions more often. So we're going to try to be doing these more often. I already see questions um, pouring in onto the Cardano effect at gmail.com. You can reach us there, just send us questions, and you can ask us questions on Twitter and Reddit, but we prefer to to condense all the questions into the the Gmail account, and then we're gonna use that for further Q&A episodes. So that being said, thank you for that. We, are on, we, we just passed the 3,500 subscribers mark, so if you're not subscribed to the Cardano Effect channel, and you're watching the Cardano Effect um, podcast, you need to subscribe. Just give us that extra subscription base. It really helps push the Cardano Effect f- higher and further and really gets the Cardano name out there. We're trying to make sure that everyone that wants to learn about the project can learn about the project. Um, I would like to apologize for something that I said last episode. I said that the Washington DC meetup was at the end of this month, but it's actually at the end of February. The one in Georgia, the country is actually happening this week, uh, but the one in Washington DC is happening next month. And with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to Rick, but I wanna remind everyone that nothing we say is financial advice or should be taken as such. If you need a financial advisor, find someone who's qualified to do so. If not, um, you know, you are your best financial advisor. But none, none of what we say on this podcast should be taken as financial advice. And with that being said, Rick, how are you doing today? Philippe, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking and thanks for the introduction. I'm calling in from San Diego. I'm on travel until the middle of February. So I don't have my usual The Cardano Effect setup going in the background. Uh, So to transition into the podcast, I do want to point out a few things. We always like to inform our viewers of either the latest news or things that are going on in Cardano and something to be aware of. There's a little bit of a scam out there. We don't we don't know if it's a scam or not, but they're calling themselves Cardano Classic, whatever that is. It's not associated with IOHK, Umergo, the Cardano Fo- or the Cardano Foundation. That's Cardano Classic. And be aware of that in the future. Please make sure you let other people know so we can educate uh, new people coming into the ecosystem and make sure they're aware of any possible scams. Uh, there is another scam to be aware of, and that is if you see on Telegram or on any social media to download a file called dataless.anything.zip. That is, that is a scam also. It's either a virus or malware that's used to penetrate your computer and get your data from Daedalus. And so be aware of that. Do not download these malicious files from anywhere except the official websites. If you have any questions or problems, please get on the Cardano forum or on the Telegram and ask someone who's knowledgeable that you can trust to get you pointed in the right place to download those files. Uh, next, I would like to touch on uh, that we we are this podcast is also available on Google Play Music, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Libsyn, and Radio Public. Next, I would like to introduce our guest, Mr. Floyan Bonner. Mr. Floyan Bonner is the Chief Marketing Officer at Emergo. So I'll tell you a little bit about Emergo, and then he can tell us a little bit about himself. All right. So Emergo, the, you got the three major organizations. You have IOHK, which does the engineering. Emergo is the business arm, and the Cardano Foundation takes care of the trademarks and uh, some of the legal matters, okay? So Emergo, their, for their statement is, Emergo drives the adoption of Cardano and adds value to ADA holders by building, investing in, and advising projects or organizations that adopt Cardano's decentralized blockchain ecosystem. Emergo leverages its expertise in blockchain research and development, as well as its global network of related blockchain and industry partners to support ventures globally. So next, I'm going to pass the mic over to Mr. Florian Bonaire. So Florian, tell us, how are you doing today and where are you calling in from? Hi, everyone. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Philippe. I'm doing good. Thank you. Um, It's a sunny morning here in Tokyo. Uh, I joined Emergo about five months ago, and while I joined, I also moved to Tokyo where where the project was started and where most of our team is. 
Um, so that's where I'm calling in from. Yeah. Good. Thanks for that. And uh, so you, you started with Emergo five months ago. How did you come to learn about Cardano? How did you get involved with Cardano? So to give you a little bit of background on myself, I, I've always been passionate about two things. Um, the first one being Asia and the second one being technology, um, very broadly speaking. And so after uh, my university, I decided to come to Asia to experience, to experience it from the, from the heart. From, I really wanted to go there and really see it with my own eyes. Um, and I ended up working in the field of startups, specifically startups that leverage technology to improve environmental or social causes worldwide. Um, I did that in China for about eight years in a number of different ventures. Uh, some startups that I joined, some startups that I actually founded. Um, and through that process and through that network building, I came in contact with a number of different people, um, especially people from SOSV side and China Accelerator. And through that network of mentors, I met um, Man Meet, who is currently Chief Investment Officer at Emergo. Um, and so last summer, we started seriously discussing about potential opportunities in Japan. I was obviously aware of blockchain technology and crypto, but I wasn't 100% into it. Um, after I looked at it a little bit more, I realized that it really fits this personal mission that I, that I just explained, which is to leverage technology for the environment. Um, and I considered the opportunity. I didn't hesitate long, and I just flew myself over to Tokyo. It, everything happened pretty fast because I saw it as a as a great opportunity, and you know I mentioned environmental issues and social issues a couple of times. That's what really attracted me, and that's one of the things that really attracted me in in Cardano is because Charles often talks about you know banking the unbanked, and Cardano is typically a project that won't focus on the big international stock exchanges. It's a project that's going to go to Indonesia, to Africa, to a, a bunch of countries that are not necessarily as developed as as the large financial places. So um, to me, that was that was really important. Yeah, and and again, I didn't hesitate a whole long time to to get myself to Tokyo. I love the idea that you are into making you know the clean energy or whatever it is. I noticed your your Twitter handle is at Tech for Earth. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's really cool. And Cardano is a low power, a low energy power saving type blockchain. And that's cool too. So one thing we like to do at the Cardano effect is we, we like to start off with the big picture first. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe a lot of our viewers, they might not know what a chief marketing officer does. So can you tell, tell us a little bit about that? What does it look like a day in the life of a chief marketing officer? And also throw in there, you know, what, what makes your day crazy sometimes, but what's, what's a day in the life of a chief marketing officer look like? So first of all, uh, I, I, as I mentioned, I really come from a startup background. And I think that most people with that kind of experience would agree that titles don't really matter. It depends in which culture you operate. It depends who you talk to. Having a name card with a title is important. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary. Um, but if we're talking about day to day, I don't think it really matters. The only thing that matters is how do you actually get down to work? How do you actually make stuff happen? How do you actually leverage your experience to help people around you work in a more efficient way? Um, and I really try to give as much credit as possible to my team because I'm no expert in crypto. I'm no expert in Japan. There are a lot of things in which I am no ex expert, but there are a few things in which I, I, can, I, can, I can defend myself, I can add value, and I try to focus on those areas. So uh, again, to answer your question a bit more directly, I think a day in my life is a lot of uh, management, a lot of guiding people, um, a lot of trying to help people. So I constantly ask uh, anyone in the company, whether it's our CEO or whether it's my own 
um, direct line reports, I always ask, how can I help you? Um, I really take it as my main responsibility to help people around me do what they do best. Um, and that's why I hire people who are better than me to do a bunch of different things that I couldn't handle by myself, including social media management, including video production, including SEO, what have you. Um, and so I do want to take this opportunity um, to give you guys a, a big shout out. I think what you've done is, is incredible because now is already episode 17 and all of this started only a few months ago and you have great traction and you know what you're doing and you're really helping the community. And although you don't work for Emergo, obviously, there is kind of that relationship where I think people like you who are skilled at what they do should just go out there and do it. And people like me should give the, the, the space and the freedom and the resources necessary for people like you to, to, to do things. So when I, when I think about my team members, that's really the kind of attitude that I try to have with them. Thank you for that, Florian. We appreciate that. Um, we appreciate the support, and we're you know we're glad that people want to come on that represent Cardano. And mm. um, it's now you're our first guest. I mean, we have Sebastian on all the time. He works at Emergo, but you are our first Emergo employee that's not a host of the Cardano Effect podcast. So we're honored to have you, and you're definitely setting the bar high. So we're excited. <laughs> Um, so I have a question for you. So I was looking at your LinkedIn profile and it says that you were ahead of a global partnerships and international expansion for a startup company called Mobike. Mm. And Mobike is a bicycle sharing system in China that mm. raised $928 million in seed funding. So mm. it says that, you know, you basically have a lot of success with partnerships and expansion. Mm. So, um, what, what, what did you learn from that? from that company, from, from building that company? And what are you going to apply to Emergo and Cardano? Oh, man. Um, so just a, a quick note. It's a total funding was 900 plus million. So like all, all rounds from seeds and from A to D, I think the last round of funding was D or E. It was almost a billion, but ov overall. Uh, because a billion of funding for seed is, is a little much. Um, so for those who don't know Mobike, uh, but who might know other companies that go by the names of uh, Bird or uh, Lime, um, Mobike was the first one. Mobike was the Chinese-founded dockless bike share company. Um, so similar to the usual, you know, like city bike share in Washington. Uh, a lot of cities have it worldwide. You've got, I think, over 1,200 cities that have those shared bike programs. So it's the same idea, except ours were dockless. So you can pick up the bike anywhere and you can return it anywhere. Every bike has a GPS embedded in its chassis. And so we can we can track it in real time. And so users through our through Mobike app just find a bike and rent it and take it to wherever they want to go. And so Mobike was the very first one to do that. Um, I do have a lot of memories and a lot of insights from that experience uh, that I definitely try to apply at Emergo. Um, I have to be prudent in the way I do that because the industry is different, because the, the working culture is different. It's a different country. So I do have to adapt some of those learnings because I can't just copy paste stuff from a country to another. Um, but there are some some attitudes that I do like to to keep in mind. One is definitely to move fast. So if we encounter an issue or if there's something that needs to be solved, we should solve it fast. Like never put off anything to the second day. Uh, if you can solve a problem today right now, then you should you should solve it right now. Uh, and it goes for very small things like answering emails. Um, I think it's important to not have a backlog of emails. Um, so just moving fast and solving problems. Uh, also thinking big. So every time I talk to my marketing team, I encourage them to go and target potential partners or potential 
campaigns that are going to enable us to grow tenfold or a hundredfold at one time. I think it's great to have collaborations with um, smaller companies uh, or organizations, if it really makes sense. But what we want is to drive the adoption of Cardano eventually towards something that is mainstream. So if we really want to go towards mainstream, we need to think of times 100, times 1,000, not times 2. Um, times 2 will work, but it's gonna, mathematically it's going to take a lot longer time than if we go for big partners right now. Um, and that, that is definitely something, some kind of a crazy mindset that I keep from, from Mobike. Because um, when I joined in April 2016, Mobike, we had 2,000 bikes. And when I left August 2018, we had 9 million. So there, <laughs> so there was kind of a, a exponential growth. Um, and you know, that's just the number of total, total bikes. There are many other facets of the business that I won't mention here, but um, I do like that, that mindset of doing things fast and, and actually getting down to business and, and thinking big. Wow, That's I it. like your leadership style. Oh, sorry, Philippe, go ahead. I really like that style. I mean, so far, everything I've heard, leaders need, like the first part where you said, uh, you, you can't possibly know anything, so you have to hire the people that know how to do things. That's a great quality in leadership to have. Uh, a leader cannot possibly do everything. You're, you're stronger when you have a good team backing you up. And uh, I really like the idea that you move fast and you want to grow exponentially. I mean, going from 2,000 bikes to 9 million bikes. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine if you do that at Mergo? <laughs> All right. So, Philippe, you were saying. <laughs> no, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I was saying, um, so, Sebastian, I don't know if you can highlight this because you may work at a different department at Mergo, but do you – do you contact Florian? It does your department when you're releasing Yodoi and he's working on partnerships. What 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 is the communication like between different departments at Emergo? I don't know. I think we could start with Sebastian and then move on to Florian. Yeah, I think we work together extremely tight. We message each other almost every day. We coordinate on almost everything. So I I feel like the the marketing is basically backing the entire company, uh, especially in moral support. Right. So before we had, like, if you roll back to, to when I joined Emergo, basically we would try and broadcast the stuff we, we did, but it wouldn't really stick that well. And IHK kind of has the same problem where they, you know, try and broadcast all the work they're doing, but then, you know, maybe some paper becomes really well known, but some other paper maybe falls by the wayside. Right. And so you want to avoid that, right? Everything you do, should be a success and no one is a success, right? That's the goal. And so, you know, since Florian has, has come and joined our company, I think basically everything we've done has become very well known in the community. I think everything has stuck really well and that's shown a really great success uh, by Florian's team and also great cooperation between our, our two teams. And so like uh, every day when I, I, I wake up and I go on Twitter, I see like the Emergo handle like basically talking about all the great things you're doing and really uh, pushing our, our brand and letting people know about the great stuff we're doing and also with the YouTube videos they put out. So I think the marketing team is really not just driving the uh, knowledge about what we're doing to the community, but also helping our R&D team feel empowered to, to do more, right? Because every day we wake up and we're like, oh my God, like people love what we do. People know what we do. Like I gotta, you know, make some more cool features so for the team can put it out there and people can uh, see all the great stuff we're doing. So I, I think it's it's uh, been a great cooperation so far. That's super nice to hear. Makes me happy. It sounds like there's a lot of synergy between the teams. That's that's wonderful. That is wonderful. So on on the opposite end, um, we were just talking about funding in your previous startup and. You know, people love to hate on Cardano. They are always pocket watching in crypto. So they love, they want to hear that IOHK is broke, Cardano Foundation is broke, and Emergo is broke. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So Emergo doesn't suffer from a funding problem. But what is Emergo's biggest obstacle or what is the biggest challenge at Emergo? Florian. I think there, there are a couple, but I feel like we're, we're mostly 
underway to solving the biggest ones. Um, the first one kind of goes back to what Sebastian was saying is that there, there were a lot of moving pieces. This, not everything was standard and formatted and not everything had a process. Um, so I also recall before I joined, I read a few comments in the community doubting the value that I could bring to the table. And I was encouraged by those comments. And looking back on those comments now, I can say that although I didn't have a very, very strong crypto background, my knowledge about processes and my personal affinity to implement processes and to have teams working in a more efficient way, I think that was very useful uh, within Emergo. And so I think it's still a challenge because not everything is perfect. I think our social media is doing really good. Our marketing is ramping up uh, from a PR point of view. I think we can still improve. Um, so not all the processes are there yet, but we're underway. That's, that's one challenge. Another challenge is um, to manage, uh, for me more personally, is to, to balance the day-to-day -day and the longer term. Because those processes that I just mentioned, it's a very down-to-earth and a down-to-day thing that takes a lot of time and a, and, and a lot of micromanagement. If I spend a lot of time doing this, it's harder for me, obviously, to think about four months down the road or eight months down the road or a year down the road. Um, so that is a challenge that I have to, to balance almost on a daily basis. You know, how much of the time do I want to focus on day to day and how much of the time do I want to think about where we are going to be in six months? Uh, the, the, the second one actually be kind of more exciting because six months down the road, additional releases for Cardano, we're going to be moving to a more hopefully fully decentralized. It's actually going to be operable, the smart contracts and everything. So I feel like that's where the most excitement is, but obviously we're not six months down the road, we're, we're today. So balancing those two is also kind of a challenge, yeah. That was a great response, great response. Thank you, thank you. Um, so speaking on the comments from the community, um, we're gonna move to Reddit questions towards the latter half of this podcast, okay. but I had a quick question for you about Emergo's marketing arms. So if people are not familiar, Emergo is based in Japan. So how far is how far does your marketing arm reach? Is it just in Japan or do you have plans to move? Is it a worldwide thing or is it just a regional thing? Right. Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's definitely a global thing. So yes, the headquarter is in Japan and that's where our company heritage, so to say, is because of the, the founding relations between Kodama-san and Charles and other people. Um, so we do have this heritage, but I believe I was hired to, uh, first of all, build that global voice, that loud marketing voice for Emergo. And people knew when they were hiring me that I, I had done what I had done at Mobike, and then interna internationalization was a big part of the value that I could bring to the table. So we do have the Japanese background, but we're definitely going global. Um, in parallel to the decentralization of the protocol itself. So again, from a timing point of view, I think it makes a lot of sense to start this global growth process right now. Um, I think people in the community should be aware that we already have somewhat of a presence in Indonesia, in Korea, um, obviously working closely with IOHK that has folks all over the place as well. Um, and then that internationalization process is going to continue. Um, for sure. So long story short, to answer your question, it's, it's definitely a global thing. If I have a potential partner from Vietnam reaching out, uh, why not? I, I'll definitely look at it. There is no geographical limitation that I give myself. And that's also true for the, for the hiring. Um, so we're going we're gonna to publish a, a short video about the hiring cult culture at Emergo that should be released uh, next week, I think. So do check our YouTube out. And one thing I mentioned in that short video is the fact that when I look at candidates, I also don't really focus on, on the geography. I think you can find great talent anywhere. And I really don't want to limit myself to hiring people only in Tokyo or only in Singapore or only in New York. So recently we hired people in Korea, in the US, um, we've got our partners in Indonesia, so it's, it's definitely really global. Yeah. So again, in a bear market where other cryptocurrencies are 
downsizing, um, the Cardano project uh, entities are continuing to bring more people onto the team. And that's mm -hmm. nice to hear. And along with the global growth, I do want to point out Emergo, the name Emergo, I just looked it up on the page, I'd seen this before. The name comes from is a derivative from the Latin word emergere, meaning to emerge. And so that's a really nice background meaning. And uh, it's also nice to hear, it sounds like your management style is that you, you're doing team building <clears throat> from everything you've explained so far. You're doing team building, uh, communications, setting up processes, and just making sure things are getting done in a timely manner. And that all sounds like really great management skills. You know, I, I know manager, my managers are a lot like that too. And it, it works really well for the team that's trying to bring things together. So it's mm. good to hear that. Um, Philippe, are we going to switch over to the Reddit questions? Because there are a lot of very, very good Reddit questions out there. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Do you, do you want me to lead off with them? Yes, you can. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so what I did is I, I reorganized them in a more logical order. And the first one was actually already answered, and that was from Shah366. And their question was, how did your career at Emergo start? And Mr. Florian has already answered that. So I'll go to Blockwriter. And Blockwriter asked, how is the funding going with Traxia and the Keys? And will they be using Marlowe DSL on their supply chain finance platform? That is a two-part question. And we will be having Bruno and Tobias from Traxy and Lakeys coming on the program later on. But um, Florian, how would you like to respond to that? If you can respond to that. I will, I will definitely let Bruno uh, share more. I can, I can say a few things, but unfortunately I might disappoint the person who answered the question because honestly, I don't have all the information. Uh, first of all, because I joined recently and I do believe that deal was uh, was made quite a while ago. It was it was early on, so I I don't know what happened. To be honest, it's not my uh, it's not my team and it's not my field. And generally speaking, we we will share some information about the deals we make, but we will not share all the financial information. So I do respect the fact that we have um, a liability to our community, and we'll try our very best to to share relevant information. But that also probably will not have the full extent of, of, of all the financial data. Um, what I do know is that we're still planning on, on bringing them onto Cardano. Obviously, that's going to happen in parallel as the, the development of the protocol. Um, but I'm very positive about our cooperation with them. Yeah? And I actually knew Bruno from, from Shanghai, where I, where I stayed for five years before joining Emergo. So um, there's also a personal connection there. So I don't see any reason why, why they wouldn't eventually be onboarded within Cardano 100%. So I have a follow-up question because I was looking at Emergo's website and um, you obviously have different pillars for what Emergo represents. Mm -hmm. And one of the pillars is an investment arm. So you have a startup background. When you, when you, when you talk about investing in potential companies that are either going to be building smart contracts on the platform later on or just existing within the Cardano ecosystem, is it like an investing like a um, like a venture capitalist type of investing or a Y Combinator where Emergo's looking for equity from these these emerging startups? Or is it like we're investing to try and grow the platform and we're letting you you we're letting your wings spread by themselves? Or is mm -hmm. it more involved in Emergo's looking for that bottom line return? I don't know if that's a convoluted question. I think the bottom line is, does the startup add value to Cardano? I think that's the bottom line. Then that bottom line could be three months down the road. It could also be three years down the road, obviously, depending on the project. Uh, so time-wise, it's really, it's really open. I think the bottom line really is, does that startup show synergies with Cardano eventually? And then if you, if you look at, um, so I'll take this opportunity to, to kind of Take a step back. Uh, Emergo has four major business units or business lines. The first one is systems development. So we build products and services for the Cardano ecosystem. So Yoroi, for example, uh, is one of those 
products and directly adds value to the Cardano ecosystem. We can also eventually build products and services for companies and organizations. The second business unit is Education and Academy, where we educate developers and we provide a content platform for people to learn about blockchain firstly, and secondly, again, Cardano. So we'll have more developers, we'll train more developers to be proficient and able to work on Cardano. The third one goes back to your question, Philippe, um, is investment and accelerator. And that business line, that business unit has the two words investment and accelerator. So in the first uh, category, investments, it would be more of a a traditional investment approach, more of a hands-off compared to the accelerator, where we fund startups at different stages of their development uh, because they show synergies with the Cardano ecosystem. And then the accelerator is something that we're launching next month in New York in partnership with SOSV. And that's a much more hands-on approach. Um, it's a 14-week program. There's $200,000 in funding total for four startups, and they have over 50 mentors that are gonna really help them grow from wherever they are when they start to a fully fledged startup. So in that second case, it's a little bit more hands-on and we're definitely gonna support them in a much more, in a much closer, closer way. Um, and the fourth uh, business line is general advisory services, uh, hopefully on Cardano, but in the short term, not necessarily. Uh, we provide general consulting services for companies that want to be onboarded in the blockchain uh, sphere. So I hope that was uh, that was also a convoluted answer, Philippe, <laughs> but I, I hope that me describing business unit number three gave you a little bit more information about the way we invest in startups. Yes, it definitely did. It definitely did. Okay, to, so to finish up our question from BlockWriter from Reddit, the second half of the question was uh, for Traxi and the Keys. And the question was, will they be using Marlowe DSL on their supply chain finance platform? So what I'll do is I will defer the remainder of that question for when the Lakeys folks come on the program so that we can get a better answer um, about how their platform is actually working. So Philippe, would you like to take us off with the next Reddit question? Sounds good. Sounds good. So the next Reddit question is from Potato Burrito 123. That's a classic name. I've never heard of anyone put potatoes in burritos before, but that's good. Um, but at, the question is, at what state in Cardano's development will we begin to see marketing of Cardano to the general public on a Mergo's end? So I think Florian was describing this before, that um, marketing is starting. Um, of course, it's an ongoing process. Florian, did you want to say something uh, regarding this question? Yeah, sure. Uh, this question is great because it gives me an opportunity also to, to get a message out there that I haven't um, I haven't put out there so far. Um, my definition of marketing is actually extremely simple. Um, I believe that marketing is the right message delivered through the right channel to the right people at the right time with the right budget. So if you think in, of it in terms of a matrix, you've got five different categories. Uh, message, channel, target audience, budget, and time. If you can make sure that every single one of these categories has a green light for whatever marketing campaign you promote or for whatever project you engage in, then it's not 100% success uh, promise, but I would assume that you're you're pretty safe. It's already a very good start. So uh, people in the community might have noticed that the first thing that we really started to focus on was social media because it's easy to reach people all across the world and it's an easy way to get in touch directly with the, the people, the supporters who are relevant to what we do at this stage. Uh, eventually, we'll go towards more decentralization and we'll go towards more mainstream and eventually the message will change, the channels will change, and everything will be adapted. Um, so we will go towards more, more standard uh, advertising channels and, and marketing channels, but we're not quite there yet. Um, I can't also give you an exact uh, date at which it will happen, but I think it's safe to say that alongside the decentralization of Shelley uh, throughout 2019, 
we're going to see more of that traditional marketing, so to say, quote unquote, traditional marketing. Yeah, one thing I'd like to add to that also is I think Emergo right now is very active in the Telegram. I think everybody in the Telegram group knows about us, talks to us on a regular basis. I think we're very active on Twitter. You you might have noticed the Emergo handle is, is tweeting basically every day, always very good tweets, very good information. And we're very active on Reddit, where we've been sharing all the stuff we've been doing. And we're also increasingly active on YouTube. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, our marketing is, is very much uh, in progress. And uh, on all our platforms, we've had huge success, huge traction, and really good growth in the number of people that engage with us. So I think Emergo has started marketing. And in fact, uh, before Florian joined, uh, you had a lot of people ask, like, uh, when marketing? Uh, but these questions have basically disappeared, right? There's almost nobody that asks that anymore. And I think that's uh, definitely mostly in part thanks to Florian's team and their work. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Good to hear. Rick, do you want to get the next question? Yeah, sure. And on, on that last question, I would like to say, I was glad, Florian, that you explained the marketing process and the priorities, you know, the right message at the right time with the right people, the right budget, because a lot of times I see a shotgun effect. I don't understand marketing and I'll see people say, Hey, do a Super Bowl commercial, sponsor a bobsled team, all these random things thrown out there. And it's like, oh, you can't just shotgun the entire planet Earth with information. It's going to cost too much money and it's going to distract people from the direction that you're trying to go. So I'm glad that you are in charge of marketing and not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, for example, a TV ad, uh, I don't know, maybe $20,000 or $50,000, a Super Bowl ad, maybe. 200,000, half a million for, for 30 seconds. Uh, you know, I can, I can run an entire department with that kind of money for a whole year. So it's a question, as you said, it's a question of priority and, and where can we have the, the biggest return on investment in the shorter time period, in the shortest time period. Yeah, and bang for the buck because a bunch of people drinking beer and eating pizza aren't gonna be thinking, oh, crypto, that's not what they're thinking. <laughs> so. Well, hopefully, hopefully next year. Yeah, maybe I'll ask Philippe who's his pick for the Super Bowl this year. So thank you, Potato Burrito123. Thank you for the questions uh, to all our Reddit users. Our next one comes from Protoman86, and Protoman86 asks, it has been mentioned that Africa and developing nations are a major target for the Cardano ecosystem. In regards to marketing, what percentage of the focus will be on these markets versus more affluent established markets? That's a good question. Unfortunately, I won't again be able to give a, a very detailed figure. We just mentioned social media just now. I, 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 I chose to strategize around social media as a first step because the return on investment is quite good. Um, we can have a broad impact only with a few channels because by definition, social media is also decentralized. Users are, are everywhere. So it's, it's, it's hard to say. If we tweet something, anyone on the face of the earth can have access to it. Um, and then it'll be up to local communities to really pick that information and, and start to do something with it. For example, the, the meetups, uh, all the offline events, all the offline communities that are organizing themselves. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard for me to give, a, to give a, a detailed figure as an answer to that one. Um, what I can say is that I'll definitely personally be be pushing for a lot of that because again, it, it it's in line with my personal mission. I'd rather we go and help uh, startups in Africa and Southeast Asia than we go on the large uh, stock exchanges. Like on a personal level, I'm I'm more excited to do that kind of stuff. I think it's more meaningful. Um, so yeah, maybe I, I can't give a detailed figure, but we'll we'll definitely do do both. Yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. And I like to hear the sound of that. Um, you know, Cardano is it's not all about. Um, and like you're saying, you'd rather stay away from Wall Street, and I mean they'll come eventually. But helping the unbanked is one of the tenants behind Cardano, and bringing yeah. in those three plus billion people into the financial stack of the new world 
mm. it's going to benefit everyone long term. You know, you mm. don't see it now, but it will benefit. There's a, half the world is just not involved with the world, mm. if that mm. makes any sense. So um, I think that's great. Um, yeah. So quick question. Next question. Um, we have a few more questions. This one comes from Mindful Trader, and this is Nostradamus. So Nostradamus, thanks for the question. And the question is, 7 billion people are not aware of crypto. If you talk about tech or spec in your marketing strategy, you will miss 95% of the target. So my question is, when 30, 60, 90 second video commercial ads that explains an issue and how Ada will solve it? Not talking about expensive TV campaign, but videos that we can share to the, and post to the internet for free. You do not, you just need to spend a few fiat and hire a company that TV ads is their main job. Don't do that in Mergo homemade because previous videos were awful. <laughs> Yodoi video ad looks so cheap. Nostradamus. Thanks for the great question, Nostradamus. I, I don't know if you wanted to respond to that question. Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, I think, I think that person makes a good point. Um, we do need shorter clips that are more down to earth and extremely easy to understand. I, I, I cannot deny that. And it's something that we've started. Um, I'd love to talk more to that person as well, because he mentions that we should find an uh, ad agency to do the video, but then, uh, I mean, I, I'd love, please get in touch with me. I, I'd like to talk more about this, Nostradamus. Um, another item that I can point out is that not only did we hire a social media manager, but we're now also looking at hiring more specific profiles for every single channel. And so again, just now in your question, you, you mentioned uh, putting very simple, straightforward, down-to-earth videos. We're working with someone who's an ex-founder uh, who's been working for eight years in his own uh, startup in China that is a specialist in go-to market content. And he's especially keen on working, for, on, working on YouTube for our, our, our marketing. So videos like the ones you mentioned will be coming out very soon. Um, so please stay tuned. But we won't. We probably won't see any thirty-second uh, ad clip on national TV for a little while because again, that's not where the industry is at right now. I feel, um, and I'd rather do other stuff with that money uh, for the time being. Well, thank you, Nostradamus. Thank you for the great question. So you heard him at the beginning. You can get in touch with Florian. We're going to put your Twitter down in the description below. And you know, Twitter is a great mechanism to reach you. Um, so um, we'll, we'll leave it there. Rick, you want to get to the next question? Yeah, the next question may have, it's already been touched on slightly. This is from Reddit user Haskell Plus. And his question is, Mr. Benair, can you discuss the SOSV D-Labs program and give us an idea of the progress and developments and the plans surrounding it. So he's looking for a little bit more detail mm. and how the incubation process will work through it. Sure. Um, so I did mention it's a 14 week program. The, the first cohort, so the first batch of startups uh, will be launched around mid February. So we'll also release more information at that time. Uh, it's $200,000 in funding total, and there are over 50 mentors. So uh, people with experience uh, in relevant industries that are really going to guide and coach the, the startups throughout those 14 weeks. At the end of the program, there's going to be um, a sort of a demo day where the startups will pitch their idea and their product or service to potential investors. And once that first batch is done, we'll start a second one and so on and so forth. So it's it's very much a rolling program. Um, I, I believe it's two intakes per year. And this accelerator, which is named D-Labs, has been created by Emergo in partnership with SOSV. Uh, SOSV is a very large fund that is one of the most successful uh, funds ever, with very high returns. Um, and SOSV specializes in creating specific accelerators for different industries. So at the beginning of the podcast, I mentioned China Accelerator. Uh, that's one of their accelerators, obviously focused on the Chinese markets and more specifically tech and mobile. But they also have one for uh, food. They have one for uh, hardware in southern China. They have, I think, four and D-Labs is the fifth one. 
So it is an accelerator uh, on its own in partnership with SOSV. And again, there's there will be more information published on our social media channels around mid-February. And the D-Labs website is already up, and there's also a good amount of information in there. So I'm sure we can put the link in the description as well. All right, thank you, Florian. And uh, of note, a few other things that's on the webpage for Emergo, uh, other partners that are involved with Emergo are Siren Labs, Made Apps Plus, the China Accelerator that Florian just mentioned, Mox, and Tucson Co. Okay, so uh, the next question from our next Reddit user is, there's a lot here. So Philippe, you wanna start us off with uh, our jam coin? Sure, yes, this is a multi-part question. So I guess we can take this one at a time. Um, RJM Coin said, I just wanted to chime in, not necessarily with a specific question for the podcast. So the first set of questions is, um, considering traditional centralized organizations have budgets and resources for marketing, is it in Cardano's best interest to leave marketing efforts to the decentralized community? Oh, shall I just tackle this one? Uh, yes, yes, uh, I, I think so. Um, when you go international, there's always the biggest challenge is is almost always finding the balance between centralization and decentralization. A hundred percent on one extreme or the other obviously never works, or very very rarely works. So we have to find we have to fine tune that that slider. Where does the slider go? And that is something that we're still looking for for sure. Um, so far, because I also think that's where it's the easiest to start and the most organized, we've been leaning a little bit more towards centralized uh, because we do need to get those processes in place. If we go for decentralized 100% at first and we have no processes, I don't believe it's going to work in the most efficient way. So for now, we've been leaning a little bit more towards the centralized aspect of things because I need to hire a team that I need to be able to manage. So we need to have that centralization. But moving forward, I absolutely agree. Um, I want to work with the decentralized community and provide them with the tools and resources necessary for them to then go on uh, and, and do the marketing effort and do whatever they want to do with the resource that we provide. So yes, definitely, it's just going to take a little bit of time to get there. Okay, and the next question follows that perfectly, segues right into it. The next question is, highly unqualified yet passionate people want to initiate marketing campaigns and flood the community with requests for funding for their efforts. Is there a mechanism in development to help manage and possibly guide any of this? The closest thing that I can think of uh, as of today is the, the, the meetup.com slash Cardano. All of that meetup community and the events that are, are organized offline. I know it's not exactly what this user proposes, but it's what I feel is the closest shot. Um, again, eventually we want to go towards something like this where we can help to manage and guide uh, people locally with... Uh, onboarding packets with uh, uh, assets. Uh, you know, people should be able to download all of the marketing material, for example, print it locally and then use that to, to hold an event. So I don't want to say no, there, there, is, there is nothing in development. Uh, it's, it's in here and it's in the team and it's in the works. But again, it's going to take a couple of months to, to actually see it pan out. Um, in, in real life, because we're still now focusing on social media, digital marketing, getting all those processes together for that. So for that question, I would say maybe another three months or so. That sounds good. So the last question in the subset of questions is um, um, considering um, despite the desire to be fully decentralized, it seems that for the next number of years, it might be in the best interest of the project to give Cardano a kickstart with Fortune 500 level marketing efforts. Outsourcing initial marketing contracts to a couple high profile organizations could set the tone for quality marketing Cardano, which really reflects the caliber of the foundation Cardano is building in its design and development. With fan pages will come scam pages as we've seen with Cardano Classic. Is there possibly a mechanism to qualify projects with some sort of verified status that follow certain rules? That's uh, again, that's a very good uh, comment. I, I, I love that person's mindset 
because in at the beginning of the podcast i mentioned you know that i i really wanted to go for companies that were 10 times bigger than us or 100 times or a thousand times bigger than us you know um so working with big corporations or national governments is definitely something we want to to, to go for i i believe um so i like that person's mindset if he or she wants to reach out to me as well i'd be happy to chat um and then to answer the question uh, there's definitely ways that we can make that happen. Um, I'm a huge fan of badges. I love any kind of gamification system where you complete a task and you get a badge. I, I just love that. I think it's really engaging. And I think it, it's, it's engaging for a lot of people. It doesn't matter what the, sometimes it doesn't matter what the financial reward is. As long as you get a, a badge that shows your status, uh, you can get a kick out of that. You can you can be happy with that. So along this, those same lines, having some verified projects and some verified ambassadors um, is is a great idea. Again, it's going to take a little bit of time um, because we're just not there yet. But having something like uh, the Cardano Ambassador Program uh, could be the Cardano Club. It could be any way of, of really leveraging people in the community and, and also projects and making sure that those people and those projects are officially supported by Cardano or by Emergo. I think that's a great idea. It's something that we'll have to work on throughout 2019. Yeah, and if I can add to that, so Cardano Foundation and I was care also working on this kind of idea. And so there's already the Cardano Ambassador Program that's like a soft launch, I think. So there's the website where you can apply. I'm not sure how much uh, they started because I'm not uh, involved with it. Uh, but the other uh, groups in the space are also looking into this and we're trying to find a system that, that works for everybody, which is very hard. But so uh, keep your, your eyes out for, for these kinds of programs. And if you're interested in joining, definitely reach out and apply. I have a follow-up question for you, Sebastian, and then we can move it over to Florian. Um, so in the, in the spirit of decentralization, both of you work at Emergo. What do you see Emergo's role in three to five years? Once Cardano becomes fully decentralized, where where do you see yourselves and where do you see Emergo? Sebastian, the floor is yours. Yeah, that's a, that's a really hard question. I mean, three to five years is a huge amount of time, especially in the blockchain space. Uh, you know, five years ago, Ethereum was not a thing yet, right? And that completely revolutionized uh, smart contracts and this way of thinking. So. We'll see what happens in five years. But kind of what I think is that the technology is yet to be fully solved, right? There's still so many uh, research questions that are open, so many uh, research projects that are done, but not yet turned into real life products. So there's no shortage of stuff to, that needs to be done. And so as long as we as Cardano and we as Emergo do not become complacent, as long as we're always willing to stay at the front line of technology and advancements, we'll have no shortage of, of stuff to do, stuff to build on, and stuff to contribute to both the world and to our communities. So that's that's where I see us in five years. It's basically the same place we are now in a sense, at the front line, trying to turn uh, cutting edge research into products and uh, trying to deploy that in a, in a global setting. That's a good That's a good answer. My, 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 my comment is the same, but more from a business point of view. Um, I think Sebastian and I are both very optimistic. I, I think Emergo will become, or my wish is that Emergo will become the go-to company, the go-to um, builder uh, for anything Cardano. So there should be no question in potential customers' minds when they are thinking about either adopting blockchain or... Uh, increasing their their blockchain uh, technology or, or moving on to third generation or what have you, they'll go to Emergo because Emergo will have that brand name of being the official venture builder for Cardano. So our teams will know the protocol the best, um, just like Sebastian today. <laughs> uh, our teams will be able to develop the fastest. Uh, our teams will just be the best ones to build on top of Cardano. And hopefully the work that we're starting now will, over the years, bring that Emergo brand name to that level. Um, so I've been telling, I've been sharing this book with uh, everyone in my team, and I can also mention it here with uh, with you guys. 
Um, the name of the book is called Utility, Y-O-U-Tility. And if I remember the author's name correctly, it's J. Uh, Bear, B-A-E-R. Uh, apologies if I made a mistake there, but we'll double check. And the, the, the title of the book is basically Why Smart Marketing is About Help, Not Hype. Uh, so uh, I don't get commissions for, for for that book. I don't know the author, but it, it was really, really helpful. And I read it just before joining in, joining Emergo, and I realized how much that applied to this industry and to this community. If you're helpful, if you push out content that is not so sponsored, but if you really genuinely want to help people understand, just like Sebastian has been doing for years now, that builds trust, that builds a relationship between the company and the community eventually between the company and our potential customers. Um, so yeah, to kind of sum it up, I hope Emergo will be the most useful company out there to help organizations understand blockchain, learn about Cardano, and eventually being embedded in the Cardano ecosystem. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Florian. So the book is called Utility by Jay Bear, if I got it down correctly, right? That's right. Y O Utility. Okay. Okay. All right, now I'll cover the last uh, Reddit question as long as my video doesn't drop out. You see me popping in and out like a little whack-a-mole down there. <laughs> I see it dropping out. Okay, so the last question from our Reddit user is from Reddit user, what is Cardano? That's the name of the user. And the person asks, it's related to previous questions. They state, there have been a few people posting on the Cardano forum page in regards to starting a low-cost, high-exposure guerrilla marketing campaign. Do you think that gaining exposure to the masses is critical at this stage, or should the ecosystem be more focused on marketing the developer experience side of the platform first? And it sounds like there's two parts to the question. They're talking about the guerrilla marketing campaign, but I think the more important half of the question there is, do you think that gaining exposure to the, critical, the masses is critical at this stage, or should the ecosystem be more focused on marketing the developer experience side of the platform first? Florian? Mm. Again, it's kind of a balance. If I have to choose between one or the other, I would say short term, definitely uh, focused on the developer experience. Make sure that we can use it, that it's implementable, that everything is there. Uh, to actually build projects on top of it. So short term, if I had to choose one, I would say the, the second part of the question. But then again, going to my simple definition of, of marketing, you know, when you talk, when you mentioned to the masses, how, how big of the masses are those masses? Um, now the community is thousands, maybe dozens of thousands of people. Um, sometimes we do marketing campaigns and we reach a lot more uh, we reach we go to hundreds of, of thousands so the metaps plus campaign that we did just last month um with our our partner company in korea the ada crypto card where you can actually buy uh purchase a physical card and then go into thirty thousand shops in korea and actually pay with your ada uh, that campaign alone got uh almost a million impressions so uh, you know it's already time 10 or 100 times more than the average reach that we get on on our on our twitter or something so it really depends again to boil it down to a very simple answer i would say not just yet to the masses um soon throughout 2019 uh, for sure will will appeal more directly to companies organization and just general public yeah yeah that sounds good you know in the crypto community We've been in a bear market for a very long time. So when people want to um, market to the masses, I completely understand. But, you know, it's it's to save the price. And at, at the end of the day, things need to be there needs to be processes put in place and it needs mm. to be a stepwise function. Mm. You can't just blow all the money immediately. It has to mm. last and the company has to last. And I understand the bear market is hurting. You know, like I'm hurting. I wrote it all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, I would love for every single person to go and put money in ADA right now and it, it the, the price skyrockets, but that's not gonna lead to long-term longevity. It's gonna just mm -hmm. lead to another dump later in the future. Mm -hmm. So that being said, we asked this question a few episodes ago. It's prevalent in the crypto community and it doesn't have to be a price thing. It's more like a vision. 
when moon for you, what is your moon vision for Cardano? And this could be just like the philosophical goals of what Cardano hits after a few years. It doesn't necessarily have to be a price prediction. I, I, I obviously will not do any price prediction and I will barely do any prediction at all because usually people who <laughs> publicly make predictions, it, it, I think in most cases it ends rather poorly than, than, than greatly. So I'm going to keep away from that. Um, but what I can say is I think 2019 will definitely be a turning point, uh, both because all of the three companies are hiring an increasing number of good people and because the protocol is actually going to be fully de decentralized and operable. Um, 2020, hopefully, we'll start to see mass adoption or really mainstream uh, now talking into, you know, just now we said like one campaign that we did was maybe a million impressions. Hopefully in 2020, we can hit 10 or 50 million impressions in terms of social media impact. And thirdly, Cardano is here to stay and it's a very long-term project. And, and if everything goes according to plan, it's here to stay for, for hopefully hundreds of years. Um, so I'm not going to say when to the moon, but I'll say that we'll get there and then we'll go above and beyond. Awesome. I like how you said that. It's safe, but it, you know, it answered the question. Because if you throw a prediction out there, people are a year from now, they'll be going, but you said blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And we don't want that. We don't want that. I like your answer. That was good. And I dropped that again there, but I did catch earlier that up to 30,000 places in South Korea take Nate apps, which means they can take ADA on the card. And so I think I need to go to South Korea because I'm pretty sure if there's 30,000 places to take it, one of them sells tacos, so maybe I can get my taco there. <laughs> let's let's go let's go together. Let's go find that taco place together. Uh, Rick, that's that's going to be a trending campaign in the future. We need to get Rick his taco. So it, I'm looking forward to that. Maybe that's the campaign that's going to get 10 million or 50 million impressions. Just let's do it. Rick and taco and an Ada card. You know that would be great. <laughs> so we have we haven't brought this question up in a long time, and you you can just be as Fortright as possible. So John O'Connor gave us a great story, but what's your craziest story, your craziest experience in the blockchain space? What is the craziest thing that has happened to you? And if it's illegal or felony, you don't have to answer. <laughs> <laughs> it could be just fun, fun, funny or goofy or whatever. We'll just cut this little piece out. <laughs> Even though, I, no. even though John's um, John's story was 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 pretty funny and. Um, <laughs> He ended up Waterline. in prison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I will keep it. I will definitely keep it uh, PG thirteen uh, because I haven't been in that space uh, all too long, and because the thing that comes to mind is 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 PG thirteen, but it really is from a from a professional point of view, it really is kind of amazing, um, and. It's not one thing that happened once. It's something that basically happens every week, at least. Not every day, but every week. And it's it's that liability to the community. Um, in my previous business experiences, it was mostly B2C. And yes, you would come into contact with the customer. And yes, we had customer service. And yes, you had all those usual departments and everything. But customer service or like listening to the community was just a thing. It was just a part of the business or a part of our department. Whereas ever since I joined, it's so much more visceral and you have people that really, they know what they're talking about more, more than I do. And I have no issue accepting that at all because, you know, again, like you're the experts, other people are the experts. And so when you have people that come up to you asking very detailed questions, um, most of the time with a, with a good background, with good intentions, but again, they know what they're talking about. And you have a duty to answer those questions. Um, that that to me is pretty crazy because it's something that I never experienced before in my in my professional life. So being being liable and having a duty to those community members for me is is pretty crazy. <laughs> I, I could imagine that could get um, a little bit out of control. Is it just Cardano related questions that they're asking you, or is it like how does this compare to this cryptocurrency? You know, everyone wants to kind of go with their own separate cryptocurrency. Mm. Is it specific questions about blockchain in general or is it specific questions about Cardano? It's specific, uh, it's specific about Cardano mostly. 
And I, I do believe we have to respect those questions and try our best to answer. At the same time, um, we have to draw a line somewhere because Emergo is a private company. So of course, we're working for this open source protocol and obviously we want to help it and, and, and we're doing it, but some information are just not public. And when people come up and ask for that information, it feels, you know, that's why I say it's crazy because on one hand, you feel like you have a duty to answer, but on the other hand, you, you don't. Not for everything, not for every single piece of information, because some of that information is classified and sometimes it's just not relevant to our mission. You know, us not disclosing something uh, doesn't mean that we don't help the ecosystem and it doesn't mean that we're not doing our job. But you'll I'll often get people asking asking all those questions and, and just having that duty um, expressed every day, like that's that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I know. At least it's, pretty, it's pretty different from, from what I, I experienced before. Yeah, I know what you mean, because in blockchain, a lot of people think, and it's fair enough, but they think you have to be absolutely transparent about everything. And if you're not transparent about every single thing, then you're hiding something. And that's just not true. When it comes to private companies, there is the, the public facing side of the company. And then like the books, companies, they don't take their books and open their books to you and say, oh, here you go. Here's here's every detail because that would that can destroy a business plan. So, you know, that's uh, some people have to accept is that when you're dealing with a private company or privately organized event, there are some things that are transparent. And that's usually what affects the customer. That is a transparent factor. But what goes on inside the box is. Uh, business sensitive and all businesses do that business sensitive material is not released to the public by any means by any major organization so I can understand where you're coming from Florian so don't get me wrong we'll really try our best every single day to live up to the expectations and to respect the the philosophy of these decentralized solutions I'm only talking about as you mentioned, Rick, like very deep and specific information that at the end of the day, isn't all that relevant with the decentralized protocol. Thank you. That makes sense. That makes sense. So I'm not sure if this question is off tangent or off topic. You can let me know, but I get questions, private message to me in Telegram, and I've gotten quite a few about what's the difference between Emergo versus Emergo HK um, people see both of them and they have their own separate Twitter accounts. Mm. What's what is it the same company, just different satellite offices or what's going on there? We released a statement on our blog about a couple of months ago. So for any official wording, I invite people to go and read that blog article. Uh, having said that, uh, everyone will be present at Japan Blockchain Conference next week. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to share more information maybe a couple of months down the road. Um, ever since I joined, my mission really has been to make everything more standard, more simple, more direct, the right message, the right audience. So that topic is something that we're looking at. I can't give you any final wording yet. Uh, for now, it's the blog article uh, on our websites, and we'll talk again in a couple of months. Cool. And I think I also saw in there, is there such thing as an Emergo Indonesia? I thought I saw that come up somewhere. So we, again, if you head to our YouTube channel, there's the Emergo briefing of December, I believe it is, where we present our local partner in Indonesia, uh, an event held in a university. Uh, so it's, it's undergoing. We definitely have a presence in Indonesia. Going back to the previous question, as of now, the detailed structure of the company is not uh, public. We will share more transparent information also within a couple of months. But it is uh, known and it is public that as of today, we have uh, partners in Indonesia, we have uh, potential customers, we already have pi partnerships signed with universities, we're already developing the curriculum for the education side of the business. Um, so all of that is 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 public. Uh, again, we'll give more information probably within two to three months as to the the local structure and team and and, and everything else. All of that all of that information is also tied to a website revamp 
So not only do we have new social media, new videos, uh, the next step really is the, the websites and the newsletter. So as of today, it's still the, the, the old websites. Um, again, within a couple of months, we'll have more blog articles detailing all of those projects that we just mentioned. Uh, we'll have a new design, we'll have uh, uh, video highlights, we'll have uh, a lot of cool stuff on the new website. So just keep following us and head to our websites ever so often and you'll see that that progress and that information made transparent. Well, Florian, thank you so much for answering these questions. Some of them are pretty tough questions. I think people are going to be very happy to see uh, someone someone on the program from marketing and also it's someone from Emergo, which is good because the podcast is starting to branch out into other areas. And uh, so thank you very much for being thank here. You. I appreciate you coming on the program. Uh, Philippe, do you have anything else you'd like to go over before you take us out, sir? Um, that's it. I want to thank Florian for joining us. It was an honor to have you. And once again, it, the support is great. The support is great. Uh, Rick, Sebastian and I, you know, we, we host the podcast every, every, you know, we do twice a week. We try to do twice a week. And it's really interesting to find new guests. And there are so many people working on the Cardano project. Like we were saying before, it's split into three different branches. You have IOHK, you have Emergo, and you have the Cardano Foundation. And there are so many different sides to the project. It's just massive. It's massive. And there are so many different things to learn. And we're going to have some of the guests that we had previously come back on to, to have new podcasts. And we hope that you can join us again. And with that being said, we're going to close out this episode. Thank you to everyone for dropping Reddit questions. Florian, I'm going to give you the last words for to conclude this episode. But if not, you know, thank you so much. And we really appreciate you tuning into the Cardano Effect podcast every week. And until the next time, Florian. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I wanted to invite myself again to the podcast, but you did that <laughs> for me just now. <laughs> so that was my final word. Uh, I'll see you again very soon. Okay. Sounds good, everyone. Bye. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.